among the most luxurious of the half dolls to be presented in part two of Ladies' Fancies are the dolls uh, that were made with the, apl the applied Dresden flowers on them. The flowers might be in their hair, it might be little bouquets that they're holding, or it might be a combination of both, sometimes on their bodice. And I have a wonderful selection here to show you how, how this would be done. I wanted to show you these two little girls in particular because we have here a variation of what the porcelain manufacturers were doing. Remember, this was now around the turn of the century, and people were starting, just starting to think of maybe making their homes not quite so complicated as they had. So figures like this, these wonderful porcelain, all, this is all porcelain, this little girl right here, and wonderful figures like this that had been so popular and people would buy them and collect them at the time, uh, new from the manufacturers. Well, now the manufacturers suddenly decided, hey, wait a minute, what if we only made half the figure and put a little base on it with sew holes? Then people might buy that also, turn it into this girl, attach it to like a tea cozy base or a pin cushion base or a candy box base, and there we would have another wonderful market for our product without having to go to the problem of making entirely two molds. So we have these two wonderful dolls, one an entirely full porcelain figure, made by the same manufacturer as this one, which is attached to a pincushion. I'll turn them around so you can see the little backside too. They're just absolutely wonderful. Now, along the same lines is this beautiful little girl, and they had a really good angle with her they were doing. They, in this particular model, the arms were posed, as you can see, in front of her bodice, now, why was that? They're away from her body, so there's a space in between the arms and the front of her body. The purpose was, and the idea was, to accentuate the, fr the fl floral idea of what she's doing, and manufacturers encourage people to find little silk flowers or fresh flowers that could be held in her hands. When she was a, a presented on a, on a pincushion base, it made a very, very beautiful and elegant presentation. And finally, another, an adult lady, with the Dresden floral around the top of her beautiful cap that she's wearing. And she's posed here in her original presentation. This undoubtedly done, not at home, but in the store. Let me just show you. She's seated on this wonderful curved front base with porcelain legs, which were becoming very popular. You could buy the legs separately. So if you wanted to make a full figure doll, you would have the half doll. Then you'd have let's say the uh, pin cushion, and it would be the round bulbous lower part of her body, cover it with a skirt, and then the porcelain legs coming out from beneath it, and voila, you would have a full figure of a doll. And I'll be showing you a couple examples of that in just a moment. So another wonderful example of the coronet doll. And then a few other examples of dolls from this representing the, um, the late 18th century court that I wanted to show you. I have over here, very, very beautiful, so many wonderful details about her. Now, if you feel under here, you could feel that it has the original wire frame that would have come with a doll. Let me show you, okay, hollow inside, designed to fit over a chocolate pot or a teapot or a lamp. People used to, these to cover all sorts of things. I, kept, I think they kept wanting to collect them, so they said, well, I don't have 10 teapots, but I do have a lamp, I have a, a dresser jar, so I can put get a doll and put it over that. And they would make these skirts that would go over them. Sometimes you can find the original skirts and sometimes later they had been, they had been worked on with beautiful vintage fabrics as this one. But look at this girl or woman, wonderful detail. And again, I wanna show you all the way around, but look at her hair. Her hair is not only elaborate, but he has that gold uh, necklace or um, coronet like draping over it. She has a necklace, and when she comes around again, I want you to notice her necklace. So I'm gonna bring that up to your attention later on. The rolled curls at the side, and the purple bonnet was at the back of her head. And let me turn her again, because I do want to point out that so much detail went into these that not only do you have the necklace at the front, but the chain of the necklace continues onto the back of the lady's head. So, so much detail went into the dolls all the way around. 
This is a wonderful area of collecting. Those of you who say, I've moved to a smaller home, I don't have room for so much anymore. Well, you have room for these. Yes, you do. And I encourage you to look at them carefully. Don't just look at a face and say that's it. Look at them all the way around and then try to count the details on the doll. How elaborate is the hair? Is there jewelry? What is she holding in her arms? Are the, are the arms extended? Are they posed in a wonderful way? Is she nude so that she was designed to be costumed or does she have an elaborate painted costume? So many factors uh, go into the design of these dolls. It's a wonderful, endless, endless possibilities of collecting. Um, this particular one has always been a favorite of mine because it was clearly designed to be on a base because, watch this, see, you can't just put her on a shelf. Her arms extend below the bottom of her base. A beautiful design and must have been so susceptible to breakage in the original making of the doll. So. It makes it extremely rare piece today, but so realistic in its entire modeling. Look at the shape of that body all the way around, the little folds of the costume on it. And when she comes around, look at her hands, how her fingers are extended but folded slightly. And the wonderful face, look at the face. Look at the face, just as collectors look at little all bisque miniature dolls and wanna choose them, not just because of rarity, but because the face speaks to them, well, her face will speak to you. This is an extremely rare example that I wanted to make sure you had a chance to see. I talked to you about um, the uh, Baker's Cocoa Lady before, and here's a great example of one um, with the wonderful transfer painted costume of roses, which extend on her cap and over all her bodice. So some people just try to collect every one of the Baker's Cocoa ladies that they can find, and there is a wide variation of them. I have a couple other from this time period I want you to see. This, is, this one really strikes me because our, I'm looking at this face. Now we can see this half doll, and very clearly this is a woman. But look at that face. That is a very masculine face to me. And I just, and again, just imagining the manufacturer, I'm thinking, well, maybe they were going to try to get, get two for one. And so they were going to try, they would use that same face and they would have, the, have a body and a hair a style of a man, although I've never seen it. But a very, very, just um, almost like an older, very dignified, very stern type of face. And again, beautiful detailing of the hair. This is one of my favorites. I think she's gorgeous. And again, holding a flower. This is what women did. They held flowers. And this doll, to me, falls in that category, as does the little one I'm going to put next to her. She still is really with her hair. She's not 18th century, but she's not a flapper girl either. She has a very... Um, almost theatrical style hair and certainly a theatrical style pose. This is a half doll. She was um, made in Germany, but then purchased by a French studio who applied the metal, this is gilt, gilt metal, um, filigree halter and little flare of a skirt. And then the framework that covered the porcelain top and there's a wonderful jar. I mean, this was an extraordinarily luxurious piece. Very, very expensive at the time. Let me show you how it's made on the inside, if you've ever wondered. Even to the detail of having the little um, gilt knob on the inside. So a beautiful figurine. And they came in various poses and various color bases. And this is an example of one of them that we are offering um, in Lady Fancies to a very rare piece. And another unusual novelty that began to appear was Our Lady, kind of like with 18th century hair, but now she's getting a little risque with her um, flapper type halter and gold straps. And you're seeing that face, but wait, let me turn it. Oh, look, double faced. So another type of novelty. As this market expanded, manufacturers kept trying to find different ways they could appeal to the to the buyers of this, and this little double-faced one is a particular favorite of many. 
And I have a couple other pieces that I wanted to show you. Um, if you recall, I mentioned before about, this is actually a one-piece lady. Sometimes, however, it would have been made as a half doll and then with a pincushion middle and then porcelain legs. But this is a one-piece ballerina, very, very, with, by the way, jointed arms and very much a, a part of the whole line of the bathing beauties that were popular at this time period, of which there are about 30 examples in the Lady Fancy Part Two auction. It's a very beautiful example in her original costume on her wonderful um, original base. And then this is great. This is absolutely great. On her original, um, looks like a Napoleonic style, would be from the late 1800s. Um, I think this was perhaps, she was placed on here by the store, because I honestly believe that the miniature piece of furniture is a little bit earlier than she is. She would be about the 1910, 1915 period. And look at her. You think this is a costume on her? No, the entire piece is porcelain, and it has the original painting of the gilt, and I'm going to move it here so I can turn it around. You can see that the back drape, she has that wonderful halter, she has the coronet, she has this, I don't know what it is, under her gilt skirt, that blue latticework kind of thingy. I don't know the name for it, but I think she's a great piece, and she's presented in this wonderful Napoleonic bed, so probably a, an entertainer from the Napoleonic period. And then we're going to move into showing dolls that represented a later period. So as I mentioned earlier, for some reason, the manufacturers of the ladies' fancies, half dolls and dresser pieces, decided that, well, okay, 18th century was really great, but now we're in a modern age. This is the flapper era. This is the new woman. So they decided to make more of these pieces in the image of what the current fashion was, not only in hairstyle, not only in costume, but also in posing, accessories. And one of the things that really is, was notable to me as I went along on these was how with the 18th century, pieces representing the 18th century women, they were always modest, their head was tilted slightly, or they were very proud and elegant but they weren't really saucy or flapper or so there kind of poses. And that's what they started to develop with the women that were representing uh, the new woman of the 20th century. Remember, both pieces were being done at the same time, whether they represented the 18th century or the 20th century woman. These were being made by the porcelain manufacturers in the 1910 to 1925 period, mostly. I'm showing you a couple pieces here to show you the variation in type of things that were starting to be made. This wonderful lady we featured on the cover because I just think that she is extraordinary in so many ways and I hope you're able to really see in on her face how beautifully it's done. Know that right here, this is a jar. We've waxed the lid on because we don't want to have any possible damage. But she's standing next to her hat box and the wind is blowing and it's blowing up her skirt and she's just not very shy at all. She has details like the yellow bracelet. There she has a little, it looks like a little purse tucked under her fur robe. New style hat. Look at the painting on her eyes when it comes around again and notice how now they are outlined with this dark, dramatic um, uh, makeup of the time period. She has high stockings with garters, little ruffled panties. I mean, this whole thing is so totally different than what you were finding in the earlier 18th century style pieces. Wonderful doll. All right, so next to the lady with the windblown skirt, we have what uh, is really a favorite among half doll collectors. It is a doll with a very, very stylized bob known as the Lulu Bob. Notice a couple things about it. It's brown hair, it's not black, very, very different. And it is so sharply cut, so angular, that you can actually see distinctive white stripes coming down the side, separate, designating where there might have been separations in the hair as it lay on her face. A very, very uh, strong, muscular body. Notice that 
she's more flat bosomed than the 18th century ladies were when she comes around. That was part of the new look, elongated, very slender, um, very flapper type, designed to wear flapper costumes. She has a very, very distinctive pose. Her head turns sharply, sharply to the right. Her muscular arms extended, and she's holding a mask. Little details like she has earrings, gold earrings. When you start looking at your half dolls, look for all of these things. What are the extra pieces that go with each one? I'm looking at her back now, and she has just beautifully defined muscular uh, details on her back. A rare and very, very wonderful piece. So showing you some more pieces of, again, to show you the variation of type of pieces that were started to be done, as well as, again, to notice on all three of these as we come to each one, the, the extreme dramatic painting of their face, the jewelry that they're wearing, the details, the extra details. This is a fascinating piece. In the Bootkus collection, they have lots of variations of this particular model. When I said how the same model could be used over and over again, We've had some exam they have some examples in bisque, not porcelain. They have examples that are nude, not costumed. Um, and they all are, I think there's even one that has a wig. I'm, don't hold me to that, I'm not sure. But look at little details that make this such an extraordinary thing. Look at her little slipper, like it's about to fall off of her foot. How much detail went into the modeling of that? When you're choosing your pieces, look for these kind of wonderful, wonderful details. At the back of her costume, and you'll see it again when you come around the front, but look at the back. It's not just an all yellow turban, it's yellow with a pink back. Look at the belt with the turquoise beads around it and then the gold fringe hanging down below. All of the wonderful extra details. And I'm just noticing that both feet have the slippers coming off. See, I had to turn her completely around myself to notice that, so that's what you have to do. She has jewelry, she has a wonderful gilt bracelets, and the gold beading is around the lower part of her bodice with a beautiful big center medallion. An absolutely wonderful, wonderful piece. In the middle we have a piece that I tell you, be sure to look um, at all, a piece all the way around because at the front you're not seeing how absolutely dramatically her arms are extended. And when I tell you that you want to make, try to make a story of this, I'm sure that this figure represents a particular person or event of which I don't know what it is, but anyone who might purchase it might be able to come up with um, knowing who it is, because in a way she looks like a swimmer, although the headdress would kind of belie that. Um, is, I don't know, is she a mythological figure? We don't know, but it's so dramatic. Now watch when I turn her. There's the side angle. And here's the back angle with her arms dramatically extended to the back and her palms lifted upward. She's leaning forward as she would be about to dive, but what is that headdress? What's that all about? I'm waiting for one of you to tell me. And again, notice her short black flapper hairstyle. On the sides, remember when I said to you the pose has changed? How much more stylized could you become than this particular half doll with her arms like so, uh, who, me, kind of thing. Um, she's absolutely wonderful and, again, has that very different hairstyle now, the short bob close to the head hairstyle, painted silver. Very, very different. And she is on a wonderful pincushion base. And let me turn her all the way around so you can see her from all angles. Her head is not only turned to the side, but it's tilted upward. She is very haughty. Don't mess with her. And look again at the very slender, elongated torso of the 1920 era.